मिश्रा जी आपको घूमना है एक पंद्रह बीस मिनट रुक सकते हैं आप यहाँ पे कोई तकलीफ नहीं आपको ऐसे थोड़ा पीछे आ जाइए आप कंधा हाँ बस बढ़िया एकदम बढ़िया सो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन नाउ वी आर गोइंग फॉर प्रैक्टिकल और डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन दिस इज अ प्रोब विच हैज अ मल्टी फ्रीक्वेंसी प्रोब एंड सैमसंग हैज रिसेंटली इंट्रोड्यूस दिस यूनिट that is this is a single crystal probe with a frequency of uh, 1 to 5 very huge of the probe as i told you we need 2 to 5, even more than uh, an index which is represented here the samsung is written over here that points the index which is on the right side for uhg you will find it is on the left side now i will start with a full four chamber view this probe i will keep towards the uh, left side of the or left shoulder of the patient this is how it will be kept it will be kept over apex this is the apex and so crispy you, image you can see here now you can see this is oh, the place where we have kept the probe and the portion of the heart which is closer to the probe is the apex of the left ventricle and the distal portion is the right atrium or sorry left atrium so left atrium it is the upside down image of the heart down image of the heart this can be made upright but i am used to this image only like dentists they are used to only mirror images they see correctly you know they can't see directly they see only in the mirror similarly i am habituated to see upright uh, inverted images so this is the left uh, apex of the left ventricle this is you can see nicely endocardium you can see nicely endocardium okay and look at the lv chamber the chamber is bullet shaped larger than this chamber so this ratio is approximately 1 is to 3 this is the left ventricle this is the right ventricle in between the right ventricle uh, left ventricle and left atrium is the valve this is the atrial ventricular wall and this is on since it is located on left side it is mitral wall so this is bicuspid wall so you can see nicely two cusp this is the anterior mitral leaflet and this is the posterior mitral leaflet okay so here you can study how the left ventricle is contracting how right ventricle is contracting how the valves are opening and closing unfortunately this is not a normal patient but here is a left ventricular hypertrophy you can see a left ventricle which is thick enough very thick left ventricle when you see such thick left ventricle then it look for the aortic valve this is a pical five chamber view what i have done what i have done i have just given more anterior tilt this four chamber view anterior tilt and you can see aorta this is aorta aortic valve ascending aorta can be seen so here you can study the aortic valve sub aortic location supra aortic membranes and then if you go down here you can study if is vhd is present those can be visualized in this view you can study the movements of the walls w a l l wall whether so they are normal contraction or kinetic hypokinetic or dyskinetic so this will give you idea about the very these two walls only in this four chamber view you can study only interventricular septum and the lateral wall of the left ventricle you can also study the free wall of the right ventricle whether it is contracting well or not because many times this may be diseased
here uh, you can see the flow this flow since we have kept the probe or uh, the sector over metal wall now this is depicting the flow across the metal wall this flow is red it means it is going towards the probe the probe is at the top that is probe is close to the lv apex it means the blood is going from left atrium to left ventricle towards the probe from left atrium to left ventricle across the metal wall look at the color color is red that's why it is going towards the probe it's fairly laminar there are some increase in frequencies this is pure red but there are some yellowish shades you can see over here means there is more brighter so in frequency have increased but not very much not very much so against this this is blue means the blood is going probe is at the top blood is going away from the probe this is the mid ventricle left ventricle and this is aorta so blood is going from apex to aorta away from the probe same thing is for right ventricle so nicely you can see the color shades which which change okay so this is red going towards probe and this is blue going away from the probe just give a rotation little anti clock is and you will find two chamber view now in this two chamber view the walls have changed now this is inferior wall and this is anterior wall these walls are important to study in patient with ischemic heart disease how they move whether they are normal hypokinetic or kinetic or dyskinetic so this wall motion can be very well seen in this view and the, the walls are inferior wall and anterior wall the here you can see little this portion which is close to pointer is the aorta you can see aortic cusp here this is apical three chamber view so you can see again this is all about the parasternal apical four chamber three chamber and two chamber views now switch over to for carotid pe aa jaiye aap zara nahi nahi udhar 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 us carotid pe ha this is a pointer which i am now pointing towards the right shoulder of the patient you have to slide the probe to get the best possible here i could get it better window parasternal view you first see the overall image this is the brightest structure this is pericardium above if you get a eco free space that may be because of pericardial effusion below you may find pleural effusion this is posterior wall this is aml that is anterior mitral leaflet this is pml posterior mitral leaflet you can see the thick interventricular septum and thick posterior wall this is because of left ventricular hypertrophy and above the ivs intercostal uh, interventricular septum will find right ventricle now here i feel the, the right ventricle is more noisy 
so I can use uh, TGC or you can with the uh, uh, and can reduce some echoes from here now it looks beautiful the noise has gone okay huh. this septum continues as the anterior wall of the aorta this is AML which continues as the posterior wall of the aorta and this is the left atrium this is aorta if this continuity is broken this you may find in patient with VSDs particularly patient with tetralogy of fellows this continuity may be lost so this is the location form where you can put a cursor and get M mode images this I will demonstrate you subsequently So this is a long axis which we have acquired by keeping the probe in, in the third or fourth intercostal space and the pointer is uh, pointer is towards uh, right shoulder and as I told you this pointer represents the right side of the screen now this pointer is towards the right shoulder means the aorta is here which is on the right side of the patient okay this this understanding of this uh, is very very crucial this orientation of the probe is very crucial because in congenital heart disease right one can on the left side of the heart so to, this you can make out only by this probe orientation otherwise you cannot make out you can see the the aortic cusp the upper cusp is right coronary and the lower cusp here is here is uh, non coronary as I told you you can zoom angle come ah. depth so you can nicely see LVOT this is also needed during our uh, measurements so this is how uh, is LVOT and here you can measure the left ventricular outflow track you can measure the aortic annulus a aortic annulus surgeons who decide can be placed in that location so that is very crucial for from surgical point of view here you can see there is slight amount of calcium this this calcium and more echogenicity is seen at the aortic cusp and this may be a, a degenerated aortic valve so this is short axis PRS and long axis view now let us move towards short axis I have you have to keep rotating patient to get a burst view ah, you can see the aortic cusp is thickened in the center you will find this roundish thing is aorta this comma like structure is tricuspid wall and there are three leaflets this is right coronary left, uh, left coronary here and non coronary here 
close to non coronary cusp is intraatrial septum the faint line you can see over here and above the this right coronary you find rvot right ventricular outflow tract is right atrium that's uh, why left atrium this right atrium in between this is a septum interatrial septum this is good view to study asds then you can study valvular pulmonary valvular stenosis you can study subvalvular stenosis you can look at the dimensions of the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery dilated is very well easily visualized but here it is not here you can see part of pulmonary artery this is the pulmonary wall and below is pulmonary artery it is not completely seen but part of it can be seen over here and you can see ha huh, one thing very interesting thing here you can see the opening of the left main coronary artery here this is left main coronary artery this can be seen you can put a doppler over here and can measure the turbulence if it is there that can diagnose left main coronary artery disease by this 2d echocardiography but provided you can get a proper image now i am going more towards apex this fish mouth a good slice okay this is fish mouth opening this is mitral valve this is good for to evaluate the mitral wall size in patient with mitral stenosis here you can actually measure the mitral wall size in patient with mitral stenosis and you can in a in a single frame you can see all the walls together so you can see the relative contractility of all the valves as i told you this is the septum intermedial septum this is inferior wall this is posterior wall here it is anterior wall and this is lateral wall so all these walls can be seen simultaneously their contraction and relaxation here you can see that all the walls are contracting uniformly so there is no regional wall motion abnormality now if i go more apical here you can see the these are the papillary muscles this is the posterior papillary muscle posterior medial this is anterior medial papillary muscle these two muscles can be very well seen and you have to see the rwma that regional abnormality right from because the various obtained by different arteries so then you can make out which of the arteries is culprit artery which is responsible for that particular ischemia infarction or whatever so here at the base you will find inferior wall then this is the septum, this lateral wall the septum is supplied by basal septum is supplied by circumflex or right coronary artery and if you go towards apical then this septum will be supplied by led left end so the the supply also changes when you move from one place so this is more towards apex now you can see a very small lv cavity and uh, and all the walls simultaneously
can put PW baseline ah. very nicely you can see a thin envelope inside the envelope it is all empty it is all empty this is E wave that is rapid ventricular filling phase uh, text this is this is E wave this is A wave now as I told you rapid ventricular filling phase followed by atrial contraction you can actually study the duration this is called uh, deceleration time of E wave from here to here so this gives you various uh, hemodynamic uh, results by studying this thing you know so normal in normal location E should be taller than A wave if this thing is reversed then this may be suggestive of diastolic dysfunction and you can see a very smooth flow so there are no turbulences in this now this envelope is full of velocities because it is picking up velocities right from the top to the bottom all velocities are picked up we don't know which velocity is com coming from which side so this is the basic difference between PW and CW <laughs> this cursor or volumes sample volume you can reduce from here you will find the different velocities here it is different velocities so that is how you can pick up the velocities from the place where you want so since there are uniform velocities so there is no turbulence but you can make out these velocities are coming closer to the left uh, mitral wall these are from the left ventricle, mid left ventricle. So this is how you can properly pick up the location in PW, but not in CW. CW can tell you about velocities. That I will show in some different patient. So we all about this. अपना वो patient कहाँ गया वो? तो सी ओपी डी वाला था ना सब कौशल तला है वो तो धन्यवाद मिश्रा जी अजून कर मांगे
सो दिस इज अ पेशंट ऑफ थोड़ा वाकड़े हूं बस बस सीओपीडी वेर टू फाइंड इट प्लेस लुक एट द प्लेस वेर वे कीपिंग द प्रो इट ऑलमोस्ट क्लोज टू द सब्जी पॉइंट बट वी कुड गेट सम पैरास्टेनल अपाइकल विंडो वे टू सी हाउ द वॉल क्लोजेस द क्लोजर लाइन the the shape of the the shape of the valve for instance now this is slightly dipping in the left atrium this may be very mild sort of collapse of the left atrium uh, collapse of the antimatter leaflet into left atrium this window is so nicely seen over here because of the pushing of the diaphragm down so in subcostal we have to keep the pointer towards may should be kept horizontally towards the left shoulder and then your anterior posterior sweeps can be given you can see some very thinned out foramen of well and internal system is so nicely seen in this view then you can see inferior vena cava for that yeah. you have to make the patient more supine sara hunda zara normally we try to trace the junction of the inferior vena cava to right atrium and a couple of centimeters below that junction normally measurement is done or if you can trace the junction of in, hepatic vein to inferior vena cava that is the location where normally measurement is done you can take two more measurements you can see so nicely it's collapsing so this is the maximum diameter and here touching each other diameter is 9 and 2 9 mm and 2 mm this light slightly is hypovolumic volume is less in this patient in this patient uh, you can take anti clockwise rotation and you will find short axis view short axis view of the in which you can see this is aorta this is tricuspid wall this is rvot coming down pulmonary valve and coming down to main pulmonary artery So this view is very good for children who want to study congenital heart disease. The
the relationship of great vessels can be easily very nicely demonstrated over in this view but normally this view is difficult to get in uh, adults and particularly if they are obese then still more difficult as i told you this is good view for evaluation of pulmonary quantity and the distance of pericardial effusion we normally sometimes people may use this location for trapping of the pericardial effusion sometimes they use a location also so if someone is interested in this location then we can study the pericardial effusion thank you so this is all i wanted to tell you how to acquire various images and what are the things you may look in particular uh, view thank you very much so let us move to ek talu tak bandh ho de let us move to next topic